Hi guys, welcome to my newest Star Wars Unlimited video. Today I'm going to be taking a look at arguably one of the worst leaders in the game, Hera, and seeing if we can make her work. What makes Hera so bad? Her ability is extremely situational and largely useless, and her stats for her cost are pretty abysmal. She comes in as a 6 resource card, and her stats are 4-6. Her passive ability normally is that she lets you play spectre cards of any colour in your deck, and her ability when she's a unit card is that on attack she can give a unique unit an experience token. Not completely worthless, but out of all the heroes is probably the worst, I would say, at this point. It's difficult to say what's going to happen in the future, as they add more cards to the game, more spectre cards, maybe she'll become more relevant, but right now she's bottom of the pile. So I just thought it'd be an interesting deck building challenge to try and make her work. And let's have a look and see what, what Spectre cards there are and what colours go best with Hera. And then I'll show you what deck I've made with her and I'll go through a game on Force Table with you to kind of show you how it works and show you that, that it works, basically. So with her ability, what makes it weaker than the other leaders in the game? Is it the worst in the game? At the moment, quite possibly yes. I think the reasons for this are that there's a very limited card pool and therefore a limited amount of Spectres that we can include. As we're going to discuss, the Spectre cards are all quite powerful on their own in a vacuum, but they don't really synergize into a coherent package. And as a result, it's quite hard to make a good hero deck that works well. In the future, I can see her being a bit better. She may even become one of the stronger heroes in the game because as her ability allows her to break the aspect system of the game, as more cards are added to each color and hopefully more Spectre cards are added, multicolor rainbow hero decks could become really strong in the future. But for now, let's take a look at all of the Spectre cards that we, that we can choose from in the set. So we'll, go, we'll look at them in cost order. So in total, there are eight Spectre cards in the set. Two blues, three reds, and three yellows. No greens, obviously, as that's hero's color, so we don't need the Spectre ability to play those cards. We have a good distribution in terms of cost. There's a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, and a six. And there are six units and two events. So let's discuss each of them in turn in cost order. At one cost, we've got Chopper, who comes in as a one, four, for one, uh, who has raid one when alongside another Spectre, so a two, three. So his Chopper is quite good. He's got high health for his cost. It's difficult to kill him on turn one or two. His ability is kind of okay. If it goes off and triggers, it's good. Discarding in a card from an opponent's deck is not very impactful, especially because we're running three copies of everything. So it's not like you can knock out someone's, you know, one Darth Vader. So it's rarely going to matter. And because you can't control what you discard, it's even worse. However, having said that, exhausting a resource on turn two or three is quite strong and can be a bit of a tempo loss for your opponent if you manage to pull it off. So overall, Chopper is an okay card, worth running in a hero deck. He's a disruption type of card, he kind of works well in late mid-range or control decks. Next we have Sabine, who comes in as a 2 cost 2-3 two, with 2 abilities. Whilst there are at least 3 spectres among friendly units, she can't be attacked, which essentially gives her stealth. Uh, those of you who have played Hearthstone will know that one. And her other ability is, on attack she can do a 1 damage to a defender or to the base. So Sabine is a really good aggro card. Her stats are standard for her cost, but she gets to do an extra damage on attack, so she's essentially a 3-3. The stealth doesn't matter too much, but getting its trigger is a bit easier in a hero deck than in other decks because of the aspect mixing you can do. Overall, I feel like in a hero deck, Sabine doesn't help us that much, as she's more geared towards a deck that wants to flood the board with early minions. I've tried making hero red decks in the past, and they don't tend to work very well. Next up we have Ezra, who comes in at 3 resources, he's a 3-4 with an ability which says on attack you may look at the top card of your deck, you may either play it, paying its cost, or discard it, or leave it on top of the deck. So is his ability relevant? Kind of, it can be a bit of a tempo boost to attack and then play something, so you're kind of doing 2 for 1 really, but it's contingent on you having the resources to do that, you have to be able to pay for the thing that you're playing. Discarding the top card can be quite useful if the, if the top card that you see is, you know, garbage and it's not very good for your position, that's quite useful as well. His stats are good for his cost so you're not losing out there, he can trade well, and having a higher health than attack is almost always preferable, as it makes trading easier and more likely to go for 2 for 1. Overall Ezra is a tempo card, so so far do you see a pattern emerging. We have Chopper who fits into a more kind of controlly strategy. We've got Sabine who fits into aggro and we've got Ezra who's a tempo card. Not very synergistic so far, unfortunately. Next up is Kanan who comes in at 4 resources as a 4-5. On attack he can discard cards from an opponent's deck based on the number of spectre cards in play and then heal damage from your base depending on how many different aspects are among the discarded cards. So quite a convoluted card text. But I found Kanan is actually quite good. 
He trades well, again, because he has higher health than an attack, 4-5. The discarding is not super relevant, uh, unless you're in the late game and your opponent somehow nearly run out of cards. As a side note, mill is not a thing yet in this game, but there are the sort of evidence that they want it to be a thing, certain cards. And on average, he heals about 2-3 to three points of damage from your deck on attack, which is very strong, actually. If he, if he just said restore 2, that would be a strong card. So, with regards to sort of what deck Kanan slots into, it's a more of a mid-range deck who wants to go a bit longer. Again, not really marrying up with the other cards that we have. Up next we have Zeb, who's a 5-5 five five for 5, who has a very strong on-attack ability. If you can get it to go off, this one can be very swingy. If the defender is defeated when he attacks, deal 4 damage to a ground unit. So if you manage to swing with Zeb, quite often he goes 2 for 1, or you can at least chip down something big into a manageable range. He's almost a reason alone to run mono green hero because with ECL you can ambush Zeb and take out two things quite easily and so it's quite a big board swing. You can kind of come back quite well with Zeb. But I'm not sure if it's enough to exclude entire colours from our decks and go over the mono route. Zeb is another card, a bit like Kanan, who fits in a late game or a mid-range deck. And lastly, in terms of the units, we have the Ghost. So the Ghost comes in as a 6 cost 5-6 which comes in shielded and on attack can give shields to other spectres. This is maybe the strongest of them all, I mean obviously because of its cost it should be. Being able to shield other cards is strong, and in terms of stats with a shield, I think these might be the highest in the game. I might be wrong about that, so correct me in the comments. It's a very powerful card, and it is a reason to run this deck. However, what I've found with it is that its when played effect isn't that impactful, and if you've fallen behind on the board, the ghost isn't really going to help you catch up unfortunately. The Ghost obviously fits in mid-range and late, like control decks as well. So now let's just take a look at the events package. There's only two. Uh, one is a red event called Carabast. It's two costs and it says deal damage to an enemy based on the damage of a friendly unit plus one. There's a bit of confusing wording but basically if you have, let's take Zeb as an example, if he hits a 3-5 and kills it he can then do four damage to something else and he has 3 damage on him, you play Carabast, it does 3 plus 1, so another 4 damage. So it can be really good removal, but it's extremely situational. If you don't have a damage unit, this is literally a dead card in your hand. And you have to think, would you not rather just play open fire? 4 damage no matter what, although it does cost 1 more. Spark of Rebellion is a 2 cost uh, yellow event, which says, look at an opponent's hand and discard a card from it. So this, this card does have a powerful effect, it's also quite situational. Late game, if your opponent has two or three cards in hand and you know what they're holding, if they're holding on to something, this can be very strong because you can remove that Vader or Overwhelming Barrage or something like that. But conversely, in Star Wars Unlimited, you draw two cards a turn and therefore card removal from hand is not that powerful. If it was one card a turn that people were drawing and they were dependent on that one card to win the game, that would be stronger. But as it stands, cards like this just aren't super viable I don't think. Spending two whole resources just to remove a card from your opponent's hand when they can then just play their other cards and develop and you've done nothing essentially is such a tempo loss that I just don't think you can survive that kind of thing. You need to be doing something more impactful with your resources. So for the sake of this experiment I'm going to try and use as many of the Spectre cards in my decks as possible. I'm not sure if competitively speaking that's the best decision to make but because it's fun and thematic, that's what we're going to do. So now we're going to try and build a deck around these cards which don't synergize particularly well together. So in picking a color to go with here as green, our options are blue, yellow, red, or mono green. So just a quick discussion about some of the different options and what they give you. Blue gives us access to healing and sustainability, card draw, some powerful upgrades, and some synergies with Kanan and Ezra with regards to upgrades and force cards and some powerful removal events. Possibly some of the best in the hero card pool in general. So blue would probably lead us down a kind of late game control, uh, sustaining kind of game plan. Double green comes with the benefits of the really powerful double green cards. Unfortunately, there are three double greens and only one of them is really outstanding and that's command, obviously. The other two are General Krell, who is extremely situational and doesn't have a huge impact when played and is a five cost so he's basically unplayable 
and tack pattern delta is the other one which is a good finisher and might be worth running actually obviously the benefit of ecl is that it works really well with zeb and slightly well with kanan because you play you can play zeb and you can ambush him you can take out two units in one so it's you know it's nearly strong enough to make it worth running actually red gives us a more early game aggro package uh, if you wanted to go down the route of flooding the board some really powerful damaging events uh, for a cause I believe in, that kind of thing. I have tried to make this work. I don't think it can work. I think, you know, you're always going to be better off just playing Sabine. There's no reason to play Hera in that case, unfortunately. I mean, it's probably the case for all of these decks, really. Because Hera is such a weak leader, you're probably usually better off choosing a different hero. But if you want to try and make it work for thematic reasons or just because you like a challenge, that's kind of why I'm making this video, really. Yellow gives us some heavy tempo based cards like Leia, the Falcon and Lando, as well as some powerful early game units like Greedo and Crafty Smuggler. So when you think about it, in choosing our second colour, we're kind of choosing what kind of deck we want to make. Uh, we can go control with blue, we can go tempo mid-range with mono green, aggro with red, or kind of or kind of just tempo with yellow really. I have chosen to go with double green. So let's start with uh, my double green list. So as you can see, there's a pretty even spread of cards. We're playing, in terms of Spectre cards, we're playing uh, Chopper, Carabas, Ezra, Kanan, Zeb, and the Ghost. We're not playing Sabine, just because I think we may as well just play Battle for Marine. It's always a 3-3, three, three. Um, whereas Sabine, unless she's attacking, is, is a 2-3. So I think, I don't think Sabine fits in with what we're trying to do here, but I am playing nearly every other Spectre card. So let's go through each card in a bit more detail so starting with uh, the one cost cards i'm playing alliance dispatcher so a one cost one two which has an action play a unit from your hand it costs one less so so alliance dispatcher is a kind of pseudo ramp really if you play him down on turn one and he survives uh, you can play kanan on turn two for example which is obviously very powerful because it's very difficult for your opponent to remove something with five health on turn two alternatively you could play bright hope on turn two which again six health is very difficult for your opponent to deal with so it's kind of a pseudo ramp, but obviously it's contingent on you having the initiative and being able to get this off before someone kills it, basically. Chopper, uh, I think I've already kind of discussed Chopper. He can be good, he can be bad. He's a one cost though. Battlefield Marine is the best two drop in terms of stats in the game. Two cost, three, three. I don't think any other two drop has those stats as a baseline. No abilities, but obviously very strong. Carabast, I've kind of already talked about. Uh, Admiral Akbar is a three cost one four with restore one. When played, you may deal damage to a unit equal to the number of units you control in its arena. I found Admiral Akbar is actually very good, especially in a deck like this, where we are playing one and two cost minions, quite a few of them. When he comes down, he's usually dealing at least two, maybe three damage, and it's quite a powerful tempo gain, quite a swing. You play him, he comes down and kills something else and puts up something on the board for you as well. And because he's unique, he does synergize with Hero's ability when she's on the field as well. Echo Base Defender is a 3 cost 4 3. So he's a 3 cost 4 3 with Sentinel. You'd probably prefer in an ideal world for him to be a 3 cost 3 4. But as it stands, because we're running mono green in this deck, we, our options are limited. But the 4 damage, you know, is actually pretty good sometimes. He can trade up with some four cost minions like K2SO, that kind of thing. And the fact that he has Sentinel can sometimes come in handy and be quite clutch and just stop them from going after your base, basically. Attack pattern Delta is one of our double greens. Uh, three cost, give a friendly unit uh, plus three plus three, give another friendly unit plus two plus two, and give a third unit plus one plus one. This is a finishing card, essentially. Um, if you ever played Hearthstone, I kind of think of it a bit like, I think it was called Savage Raw which was an early druid card which used to win a lot of games. You're playing this on, ideally you play a lot of small minions and then you play this on them and you wipe them out basically because it's an extra six damage near the end of the game that they're not expecting. But quite often it is, it's quite situational. It can be a dead card in your hand, so we're only playing it as a two of. Then we have a three cost, three, three in space, a consortium star viper, which when you have initiative has restored two. Again, because of the limited card pool, we don't have that many choices for space units um, in double green, but this can come in handy, especially when you need a bit of restore. Strike True is a three cost, which uh, where a friendly unit deals damage equal to its power to an enemy unit. So this is uh, some of our removal. Um, there's not a huge amount of removal to choose from, I'll be honest. 
This removal is quite good though. Um, it allows you to trade without actually having to take any damage. It's a little bit expensive, but as we have, you know, Zeb coming in at 5 damage, the Ghost 5, Steadfast Battalion 5, we do have some units with quite high attack values. And as our units do get buffed as well, it can be used on quite big things. Ezra I've already discussed. Uh, Fleet Lieutenant is a 3 cost 3 3. When played, you may attack with a unit. If it's a rebel unit, it gets plus 2 plus 0 for this attack. So this just allows you to trade up with something smaller. Something like Akbar, you can attack something for three, just when your opponent's not expecting it really. Kanan, we've already discussed. Bright Hope is an interesting card, so four cost two six with Sentinel, and then it has a useless ability, which I never use to be honest. I think it probably would be useful in other decks, but it's not useful in this one. Tempo loss is huge. So a four cost with six health is really difficult to remove, and I'm thinking particularly about seven fleet defenders. Bright Hope does really well into those because they have to go, they have to at least trade with it twice. But in some instances you can buff it because it's a unique, so a hero can buff it. And you can give it experience points with the next card coming up. So it often sticks around quite a lot. And the fact that it's got Sentinel is just really good to kind of shut down the space arena. Because we don't have that many space cards. Next up we have Command, which is a 4 cost, double green. And it's probably the main reason to run double green. So choose 2 in any order, give 2 experience tokens to a unit. A friendly unit deals damage equal to its power to a non-unique enemy unit. Put this event into player's resource and return a unit from your discard part to your hand. That last one is useless. The other three are the ones that are useful. So give two experience tokens to a unit is always a good option. The second ability is essentially strike true in the form of another card. And the last one is essentially resupply. So this is obviously really contextual, really situational. Whatever you need at that time, command can kind of be really. If you need to buff something to deal more damage to the base or to trade up, you can do that. If you need to remove something, you can also do that. Or if you're playing it on turn four and you want to get Hero out on the next turn to compete against the enemy's hero, you can do that and put it in as a resupply as well. So Command is obviously a very powerful card and one of the main reasons to run double green. Next up we have Steadfast Battalion. Uh, this is in the deck because you play ECL. So you play Steadfast Battalion and then you ambush it with ECL. You buff it itself and it's a seven attack minion. 7 health with Overwhelm. This is useful to trade with enemy bobber heroes basically. Another reason to use the, the ramp option for command basically because you want to be able to do this and compete with bobber hero cards because otherwise you do get quite stuck with those. And then Zeb and the Ghost I've kind of already discussed. So I've talked about each card in turn. Let's have a little discussion how games tend to play out with this deck really. In terms of Mulligan, you're looking for a, a quite an even spread of cards leading up to, I would say, up to four cost. So obviously it's situational, but if you have a one, a two, a three and a four, always keep that hand, obviously. If I end up getting stuck with a five cost early on, I will always resource those. Cards that I am always happy to see in my opening hand with this deck are obviously one costs both of them. Alliance Dispatcher and Chopper, Battlefield Marine. Akbar is a bit more situational. As long as you've got other cheap cards, Akbar is a good keep. But if you don't, I wouldn't keep it. And then cards that I'm really not happy to see are Attack Pattern Delta, Fleet Lieutenant, and anything later than four cost. I mean, I probably would keep if uh, if I had good curve and command, I'd probably keep that as well. So let me show you a game now and we can talk through it. So as you can see, I've already mulliganed in this game, um, but I've got quite a good curve here. I've got a one, a two and two threes. So instead of playing the Alliance Dispatcher, I'm trying to use my mana efficiently and I'm playing down the Battlefield Marine. So I'm holding on to Carabast here. So just playing my minions on curve basically. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't think about Cartel Spacer. I should have attacked first, but it's still going to allow me to get the initiative. So obviously I'm going to keep command in this situation because it's playable on this turn. Um, Carabast is so situational. Um, probably not because we're across arenas right now, I'm not going to get to use Carabast, so I'm putting it down as a resource. playing command it's so strong on to uncan on curve so you, you can use it across uh, arenas as well to get rid of something and because i'm playing on turn four it's a really good idea to use uh, the resupply element of it 
I'm just going to get rid of one of these cartel spaces. And then now I have, um, I'll have enough uh, resources going into the next round to bring in Hera. I'm happy to lose the initiative at this point if I'm, if that's inevitable. Um, although the AI decided to play an event instead of claiming. So I have two Akbars, so I'm going to resource one of them because it's a unique unit and I can't play them both in one turn. So I'm always thinking about my what my turn's going to look like when I'm uh, re choosing what to resource, like in terms of numbers. So I've played down uh, Ezra because it gives me another unit in the ground just in case they play something big. I can then Akbar it. So I'm going to get my damage in while I can because I'm not expecting things to stick around for a huge amount of time. And, then, and true enough, here comes Bosk and he knocks out Ezra. So now Akbar's not looking so good anymore, but I'm still going to play it and just ping a little bit of damage onto Bosk. Oh, actually Bosk is dead. <laughs> so now I'm going to bring in Hera. I'm doing this now because I want to get ahead of his bobber because I want to get the initiative basically. And now we're at a point where it's a race. I'm not going to trade with Bobber because he's got 7 health. It doesn't seem worth it. The AI is also in the same uh, frame of mind and is racing me too. So I claim the initiative. So I'm probably going to resource... Um, I'm having a think dispatcher because yeah that makes sense because dispatcher is kind of useless now it's an early game ramp we don't need it anymore so they've got 15 health left and i have quite a bit on the board and i just need to get my damage in as quickly as possible now so i'm going to attack with hera important to attack with hera before you attack with akbar because she gives an experience token to a unique unit akbar being unique So Strike True again can go across arenas to get rid of that Cartel Spacer. Which is exhausting. Uh, the AI is exhausting Akbar. I get my three damage in. Because they still have a lot of resources left, I'm assuming that they will play something rather than claim after this. But they do claim, so unfortunately I lose initiative. So now this is a bit dicey, I only have eight health left, but I may as well play down Chopper now. So Strike True is quite a good card at this point. I don't need any more resources. I'm not going to be able to play the Ghost. It's too slow. It's too late for it. I'm down to four health. And they've got a full health bobber, but he has exhausted. Yeah, and there's nothing that the AI can do. I've got too many minions in play. Okay, and that's the game. So that's kind of a pretty basic rundown of how the deck works against obviously an AI opponent not playing optimally really. I think playing against anyone who actually knows what they're doing, I don't think this deck could really stand a chance <laughs> against Bobber Green. But, I mean, that, that, no, that's that's exaggerating a bit. You do stand a chance, but you need things to go in your favour. You know, it's probably a 40-60 matchup in your, um, for you. But it's fun to play with Hera, and it's fun to play with the Spectre cards, and it's nice and thematic. I did also make a Vehicle Hera deck, which maybe I will do another video on. But this video is already quite long, so yeah. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.